the charge there from Mr. Boris Johnson, former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, uh, who was in Nigeria yesterday. Well, uh, let's look at the battles arising back here apart from the politicians uh, that Mr. Boris Johnson was talking about. On Monday, the 6th of February, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, that's the FIRS, and the Lagos Internal Revenue Service, the LIRS, signed a memorandum of understanding to establish a joint FIRS and LIRS audits and investigation team. They call it JITES. And then MOU aims to foster collaboration between the two tax authorities on joint tax audits and investigations to address the issue of duplication of tax on any selected taxpayer, improve exchange of information only for tax assessments, collections and recovery purposes and facilitate staff capacity development. Uh, also, the MOU will also assist the FIRS and LIRS to build a reliable and updated database on corporate and high net worth taxpayers. What are the pros and cons of this? How will it affect you? We have Mr. Emmanuel Onosomi, lead partner, Cardinal Professional Services, joining us in the studio now. Mr. Onosomi, thank you so much for your time and good morning. And I thank you for having me this morning. So, yeah. is there anything special about this? These are government agencies who want to collect our money and <laughs> our call it tax. Is there anything special about this collaboration? Oh, I, I would like to mention first, and this is not a first. You know, we've had uh, the government, you know, attempted in the past to have joint tax audit exercise, you know, through the platform of the Joint Tax Board, you know. And uh, that initiative then has its own challenges and some tooting <laughs> issues, you know, that really make the en entire process uh, uh, very successful. We only hope, you know, that the lessons from the past, you know, must have been learned. And then this time around, uh, Lagos State Government and the FRS will do things uh, differently to get the benefit from this. So it is not necessarily the first, you know, it's just a collaborative effort. And uh, to say, in the provision of the act that established the FRS, you know, in section 8, I and J, you know, it gives the FRS the power to collaborate both locally and then internationally for the purpose of tax administration in Nigeria. Mm. So I, I think the first thing that will come to a lot of taxpayers, especially those residents in Lagos, will be, will this solve the problem of multiple taxation? Yeah, and you, you see, and that is what we've also always put forward to say, you know, the future of taxation is not necessarily looking backward. You know, because when you're talking about tax audit, that means something has been done, and then you want to look at what has been done for the purpose of seeing whether they have been under disclosure or, or as the case may be. You know, the future of taxation is leveraging technology for digitalization so you can, you know, get more people into the tax net and then foster voluntary compliance, you know, by the people. You know, when people see the dividends of tax, you know, in the economy, it's easy for people to voluntarily comply and that is where we think the tax authority should be looking uh, at but it's where we are you know they are still much more interested in uh, looking backward and see how much they can get you know one of the biggest objective of the on the tax uh, on the table is to increase revenue for tax taxation you know and we want to see how it's play out we hope to discuss some of the pros and cons as we, as we yeah progress. well that's what we're doing because i mean you talked about increasing the tax net because I mean, when we look at the 2022 finance bill, it's a source of worry to a lot of businesses yeah. where we see, um, I think businesses will be taxed about 40% of their of their profits are going by what we have yeah uh, so there. so some some multiplicity of taxes increasing proposal to raise education tax exactly and also introducing some other form of taxes which then raise the effective tax rate of businesses even beyond what they have been paying uh, prior to now yes there is an argument that the tax to gdp ratio of nigeria is pretty low when compared to other economies but the effect you know the impact should not be on existing compliant taxpayer i think the government should be looking at ways to widen the net you know bring in people that have not been complying with taxes into the net so that we can increase our tax to gdp and i think it's actually a leadership issue we saw the governor of Lagos State being part of that agreement, you know, what are we doing at that level to make sure that all the political class are also contributing to the task to GDP ratio? You know, those are questions on the table rather than going to existing compliant people, you know, to ask for additional taxes. So you, you know? do think that this MOU is just for the audits and so it doesn't really take us forward to where we need to be, which is 
expanding the tax nets? Well, according to the letters of the MOU, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all about joint tax system, you know, but audit is a significant portion of it, and that's why they've expressly mentioned the creation of the joint audit and investigation team. You understand the JIT, you know, but there are some other uh, objective of the MOU, you know, uh, information exchange of information. You will know that the FRS in recent time has have a lot of international treaties, you know, getting information about, about Nigerians that may be taxable in Nigeria. You know, that is potential area of collaboration to widen the tax net if they are able to mine those data effective for the purpose of tax collection. You know, there's also the issue of uh, efficiency when it comes to you know reducing the tax uh, cost of tax collection, you know, there's a, the, 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 the government, if they can come together, you know, to do this exercise, may potentially also reduce the cost of, of collection, among other benefits, capacity development, you know, uh, from the part of the government, you know, looking from the part of the government. Yeah, I like, I like uh, what you said about the um, cost of collection, but before we go there, sharing information, you know, the taxpayers, don't they have a say? I mean, can they just wake up FIRS, LIRS and share information of taxpayers? I mean, because I mean, even in universal banking, the banks will have to take the permission of the customer before they can share information. So do we say because we have provided our information, you have it so you can share with the other tax authority? You know, there's a data protection regulation in Nigeria that is largely compliant with the global GDPR also. And uh, according to the data protection rule, to the extent that there is an express obligation to perform your duty, you know, uh, you have the right, you may have the right to share some data. For example, the FRS Establishment Act gives the FRS opportunity to use data and share this data across national agencies, even international agencies, for the purpose of improving the tax administration. But what they also have as an obligation is to ensure the confidentiality of those data and uh, eliminate any possible possibility of breaches you know, on those data. And that's why if you see in the MOU, one of the cardinal agreements is that they are going to put in place framework that will ensure that those data are kept with the highest level of confidentiality and strict measure to uh, eliminate any possibility of breaches. So, so the taxpayer does not really have a say. So they can, they can just tell me, uh, we ha well, we have the strictest and the highest level of security so, to protect so, so your it, data. It is what it is as that today, the law allows them to use your information for the purpose of tax administration. Okay, we'll go to court. <laughs> I, think that's the, I think that's the most popular phrase these days. All right, so we also talked about the cost of collection. Um, I've spoken to, especially the Lagos State uh, um, uh, Revenue Service. They've been here a couple of times. And, I, I, and sometimes I'm, I ask them, do you have the staff? Do you have the, the strength, you know, to collect, I mean, there's some parts in Lagos, you wonder if LIRS has ever been there, you know. So when we talk about the issue of cost of collection, how does this collaboration help them? So it, it actually boils down to the way they plan to implement this, you know. And uh, prior to now, before the MOU, you know, what would happen is that what must have been happening or what is happening is that you see the Lagos state government has its own audit team you know, go after taxpayers and uh, uh, maybe a team of two people, a team of three people, or in some cases, they even use consultants, external consultants to chase some of these uh, taxes, you know, and also FRS going about their home business. So what I think, you know, if they can effectively come through this collaboration and have some knowledge sharing amongst themselves. Maybe FRS nominates one person and uh, two person and LIRS nominates one person, you have a complete team and they go. So that reduces that cost you know, of collection from that uh, perspective. Also looking at the fact that, you know, uh, mobilization, out of station allowance, you know, also reduce if you have so those kind of, so that, those are areas where they can potentially, you know, reduce the cost of collection if this framework is being effect, uh, effectively implemented. You know, the system still sounds crude to me um, because in, in a technology age as, we, as it is now, and with the number of places Nigerians have deposited their data, you, you would think it's not really necessary. And, and, and I mentioned that earlier, Ine, to say the future of tax administration is digital transformation. You know, you need to be able to use the data that you had. I've, I've been here before to, determine, uh, to discuss data, you know, the importance of data in tax administration going forward. You know, you need a lot of insights 
from data first before you start going for all this exercise. You know, that will significantly help you reduce the cost of collection. If at all, you must do a tax exercise. So how well has government put in place technology that will help them mine information about taxpayer to the extent that you only go after the ones that you really need to go after? You know, you could have incurred the cost of collection only to realize that there is nothing to collect. So what do you do about that? You know, so they have been doing some form of risk assessment around that, but not as efficiently as putting in place a robust technology that mines insights from data for the purpose of audit. So that is one of the areas I also believe that this their collaboration will look into, not just make a list. You know, what insight do you have from that list and how much can you potentially recover, you know, from from, from those uh, possibilities? And, and I, I believe the Corporate Affairs uh, Commission can also provide some information you, you see, that, that is where, you know, the, 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 the future should be, you know. If you look at developed climb, you know, <laughs> there's a reason in the UK you have HMRC, tax and customs are together. You know, because they want to be able to synchronize data for the purpose of inform, informed decision. Government agencies need to look for avenue to marry data for the purpose of uh, governance, you understand? You cannot, uh, I see myself dropping data everywhere and I'm thinking, <laughs> what have we, have we done with this data? You know, CAC has a repository of all businesses in Nigeria filing annual returns every year. So how have you been able to sync that data into what FRS is doing and possibly what the Joint Tax Board is also doing in a manner that we help us you know, to increase the tax net. You know, we have a lot of data that FRS have also collected by all those international treaty, uh, common reporting standard, automatic exchange of information. What have we done with those data? You know, rather than uh, going back to the, the usual customers that are already compliant. There's a way that you can reduce your feasibility with the taxpayer and still increase your tax net by deploying technology. Help me to understand, what do you think is the huddle um, among government agencies and ministries that have stopped this synchronization of data? You go to the passport office, you go to the dry, um, uh, FRS seat for driver's license, um, you do your NIN, you do your BVN, you know, you, you, I mean, where you work, you also have your... I mean, what's the huddle? Is it competition amongst them? That so is... so I, I think a, a, a number of issues, multiplicity of issues, but I think top amongst them is the issue of goal congruence. You know, we don't really have goal congruence amongst our agencies. So everybody is pursuing their targets. You understand? Uh, FRS has its own target, customer has its own target. You know, it's the taxpayer that suffers. So I want to get as much as possible custom revenue from the same taxpayer. And then the FRS also wants to get as much as possible taxes from the same taxpayer. You know, and you then see the taxpayer suffering some level of multiple taxation because of lack of goal congruence, you know. That goal congruence defining where we are going as a country and where all our agencies know their role in that singular goal, you understand? plays a key part in solving this problem. And also, you also know, <laughs> there may be some political interest issue. You know, there are people that are for FRS and some people, that, you understand. So some political undertone may also be determining the behavior of all these agencies. They're yeah, different focus, but in the same economy. So eventually, <laughs> we, then we talk about, oh, the tax collection for 2023, the economy growth, the real sector. I mean, it, it, it all fits into the same economy at the end so, of the so, day. So you want to evaluate the, your growth and say, okay, I, 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 is this growth at the expense of the taxpayer, you understand, or whether you have been able to in increase the wide net such that, you know, the compliant ones are not feeling overburdened. Because there is also a cost to a, a, a business feeling overburdened by tax compliance issue and multiple compliance issue that may eventually make a decision to exit. And that is where we don't want our businesses to get to in this dead situation that we are in this economy. So we need to look at our policy holistically and find some form of goal congruence. There must not be duplication of taxes, you know, by tax uh, agencies and uh, collection agencies across the nation. And in the midst of this, taxpayers are still complaining of compromise in the system. Yeah. It, and sometimes it, the taxpayers play along because they feel they can pay less 
you know, when they when they comply and and, and well, cut corners. Well, it, it's it's a sensitive matter to discuss <laughs> on air, you know, but. Uh, I think the FRS, you know, give the kudos to them, you know, a number of whistleblowing um, policies that they have put in place to ensure that uh, their people are doing what is right, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, tax collection and uh, ensuring that all the revenue that is due to the government uh, comes into the post of government. Not to say that there may still be some few bad elements, you know, uh, trying to see how, but if you want to look at it from the perspective of the taxpayer also, you look at yourself as a taxpayer and evaluate, you know, is there, if not for the law, is there really a moral ground for me to comply with taxes? Because it, the only reason I'm complying is because it's a law. You know, you look around, you have to almost fix everything for yourself. And why not just use that money to fix everything for yourself and whatever is left is what I pay for taxes. You know, there's a moral question around making tax impactful for businesses in the economy. You know, if you get that sorted, then voluntary compliance will increase. And all this issue of underground conversation will also re reduce ordinarily. But because there is a mismatch, or between paying taxes and seeing the impact of taxes, it then makes those uh, conversation or efforts uh, less pro productive. Mm, and you know, all of this uh, fits into another responsibility or expectation from the incoming administration because a, a lot of Nigerians are hopeful that, you know, since uh, we have a, a new man on board from May the 29th, he, sh he, he should come with new vision, brighter vision that would uh, deal with some of these uh, things. Yeah, so I, I believe whatsoever will definitely be inaugurated. I don't want to speak to that. Well, we have a president <laughs> elect for today, we a, so we, we can simply say, yeah, yeah, so, that's an so uh, it, meant to yes, be, by the, the president-elect. By the president-elect, when the president-elect will be uh, inaugurated, I believe that uh, from his experience with Lagos State, you know, and I think he was one of the, the president-elect was one of the uh, transformative regime, you know, when it comes to increasing IGR in Lagos State, you know, during his era. And I believe he learned some things uh, from there. I think some of those ideas have also been imported into the operation of the FRS at the Centra. Uh, I think he can consolidate from those experience and bring about changes that will further progress the tax regime in Nigeria. But Nigerians will hope that will not mean more taxes to be paid. Well, I, I, I also pray <laughs> that it will mean more taxes. Because, because we already have it high when yeah. we look at the 2022 so if, finance if, bill. Yes, yeah, so you may, you, may, you may want to argue that our tax to GDP ratios is low but if you evaluate compliant taxpayers in nigeria they are multiplicity of taxes which then make the burden for the compliant ones to be high you understand but if you want to look at it and say how can we improve our tax to gdp ratio i think the way to go is to see how we can get more people into the tax net you know uh, there is this argument to say informal sectors are not taxed but they are taxed whether formally they are or informally taxed. They are informally taxed. So how do we get those informally taxed revenue back into the post of the government to add to our tax to GDP ratio? Because as of today, we can't account for those uh, collections from the informal sector. So how can we get those money back into the government force and see how that will improve our tax to GDP ratio so that we can rightly evaluate the informal sector? You understand whether they are paying taxes or not. That is one issue on the table. And another issue on the table is to also look at, you know, the, the issue of uh, during this election period, I did not hear conversation about our political people, about their tax affairs. It should be a front burner issue. Do you understand? You cannot lead from the back. You have to be seen to be doing what you want your people to do. The president elect on day one, show your tax clearance certificate. Make a strong message that this is an era for tax law buyers. Every political person should also do the same with, within their respective jurisdiction. And you then begin to see people say, okay, if the leaders, the people that are asking us to do the same, are doing the same, then eh, why, why shouldn't we do? But if I sit down wherever I am, I say, even the people that are asking me to do something is just like you're training your child. Don't watch TV, but you are on the screen. And your child wonder why can't I also see the screen? You know, so do what you want your kids to do. If you want them to read, read. Practice what <laughs> if you preach. want people to pay tax, 
Okay, tax and show it. Show it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Emmanuel yeah. Olosami, lead partner, Cardinal Professional Services. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will be following that collaboration between <laughs> FIRS and LRS and see if they own conflict. Yeah, they promise to issue the guidelines around it and yeah. the regulation. We hope to see the framework. And uh, we, the consultants, you know, it's our bread and butter. We have to analyze it and see how we can help our clients. You know, All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much uh, for you your time for this me. morning. Thank All right. You. Let's uh, take a short break now. When we come back, it's will be commodities time. You're in Business Morning on Channels Television. Mm -hmm.